Welcome to The Inevitable, a podcast by Motor Trend. Hi there, and welcome to this week's episode of The Inevitable. This is Motor Trend's podcast, vodcast about the future of the automobile, the future of mobility. How are we going and where are we going to get there? No, where are we going and how are we going to get there? I am Johnny Lieberman, joined as always by Mr. Ed Lowe. Hello there. And Ed has a special message for you from our sponsor. The Inevitable Vodcast is brought to you by the all-electric Nissan Aria, inspired by the future, designed for the now. Yeah. And, and right now, we're going to go to our question of the episode, except no, we're not, because <laughs> you guys haven't been sending them in. Yeah. So let me remind you that we have cool coffee mugs, maybe hats, T-shirts, belts, stickers. I don't think we have stickers. But we have stuff to send you. That we'll send you. We'll if, just send it right to we'll your send house. send it to you if you ask us a, a question that we um, answer on air. Uh, also... Uh, I took a spin through our podcast page, and we are uh, a little light on reviews. We could stand to use a couple more reviews. Five, five stars, if you love us. How about this? Do a five-star review and tell us about it in the comments on social media, and we'll send you some. Exactly. Uh, but please, please, please do drop us uh, your questions, anything you want answered, uh, whatever. Right? Food. I'll answer questions on food. Johnny will answer questions on beer and watches. Uh, bourbon and you can, watches. Bourbon and watches. You can send it to us at Johnny Lieberman, no H, Johnny J O N N Y Lieberman uh, uh, on Instagram or, or at gmail.com. Or at gmail.com. You can send it to me, uh, Lowdown on Instagram. You can drop it in the comments on the YouTube uh, or email us. Mot- uh, Motor Trend's uh, Instagram or Facebook or whatever page. Yeah. Motor Trend at MotorTrend.com. Yes. But I have a question, Ed. Yeah. Go for it. Okay. So um, this year at SUV of the Year, the talk of the event was that Kia kind of shot themselves in the foot because they, they gave us an EV9. Yes. And they said, you can drive it around the proving ground, but for some cockamamie reason that we don't really care about, you can't drive it on public roads. And to become a winner of one of our of the year competitions, you got to drive the thing on a public road. And that if they would have done that, only would have let us do that, it would have won. Maybe. And I'm driving the thing around. Maybe. For the last week, um, that's the scuttlebutt. We didn't publish that. That's just the scuttlebutt. And I'm driving it around, and like, would it have won? I'm, yeah, it's great. I drove it too. I'm sort of like it. To me, it's like it's almost a software-defined vehicle. It's like I'll give you. I'll give you an example. So I have a Rivian, as we everyone in the universe knows. And since I've owned it, they've done three updates to the suspension. Okay, so I bought it, and it rode a little rough. They softened it. They softened it a little too much, and then uh, a few months later, they put an update in. Now there's literally a magic carpet Goldilocks suspension setting. It's brilliant. Kia EV9, the rear is self-leveling. The front is not. Front feels kind of drunk on the 21-inch wheels. It's just always aquatic and and boat-like and weaving, and I did a 200-mile drive in it yesterday just to check it out, and it's, yeah, not great. That part can't be updated. Um... And so it's like, for this thing is $78,430. You could get a dual motor Rivian R1S that has, hang on, that has double the horsepower, that has uh, hydraulic suspension, sorry, hyd- hydraulic dampers with uh, air suspension, is just as roomy, goes further on a charge. Why, I don't, I don't get, I don't get what the great love for the EV9, aside from, like, it's pretty neat looking. It's super neat looking. It's pretty neat looking. Yeah. So so w- how am I wrong in, in a competitive marketplace at 78000 People buy with their eyes. Okay, but the Rivian's also very good looking. Eh. No, no, that's you, but people love You're talking Rivian. R1S? Yeah, the R1S. R1S has, if you want to talk about some ride issues, R1S got some ride issues. No, no, no. Again, since you drove it, that one time you drove it, they've had two major software updates. And that somehow cured the short wheelbase? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. No. Added added some length in between the (laughs) the wheels? (laughs) No, I mean, the the wheel... Defied physics? Hang on. The the wheelbase of an R1S is 121 inches. It's a pretty damn big wheelbase. Mm, Somebody fact it. Google that, please. 121.2 inches. Okay. Yeah, Sean, uh, who's our producer, no, it's okay. Google it right now and tell me in my in my headphones. 
But yeah, no, it is 121.2 inches. Um, could be 121.1 inches, but it's 121 inches. I know this because a BMW XM is 122.1 inches. I looked that up yesterday. Anyways, so it, yeah, but but the point is, as we know, what's great about software-defined vehicles is you can radically update them. And this one, tons of buttons everywhere. And like, yeah, we kind of like buttons, but it means they can never change is the problem with buttons. All right, I don't want to do this because Why not? It's, it's, I haven't driven them, either of them, 200 miles. So it's a little bit of an unfair comparison. I spent a lot of time in EV9. I spent a little bit of time in EV9. Thought it was great, comfortable. Took my kid in it. Big, roomy, but what Re- I'm relatively asking you, af- relatively affordable. No, not, what what not I'm asking thing. you is for seventy eight grand. For I se- didn't drive the seventy. Th- then let me give you a day. This is the blue one. Yeah, I just okay. wanted to parked out front. For seventy eight thousand, wouldn't you rather have a vehicle that goes further, it drives better, rides better, handles better, makes uh, twice the power, has more? I think I already said has more range, is more luxurious, and has better tech. Yeah, but I can't say that defin. I can't say which one is definitively. Cause I haven't, again, I haven't oh, I can. It. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, then that's not. So it's only. It's a one-sided debate. So well, congrats. okay. I'm, I'm, I, just, I'm just saying. Def- what am I? Defer- what am I missing about the EV9 that's so wonderful? Besides that, Kia did it. I like the exterior. Exterior is good. I like the interior. Exterior. Interior is okay. I like buttons. Did I mention I like the exterior? <laughs> so I don't know. This All is. Right. Th- I think you're going to be unsatisfied. I will. Yeah. Want, I do want to mention something that you did bring up, which is the the jury is very much out on on screens versus buttons. Euro NCAP just came out and said this is what cars of the future are going to have to have. Five buttons they will absolutely need to have. You cannot have these on a screen if you right. want to. If you want to score their top safety rating for Euro NCAP. And it's things like have to have a visible, uh, an easily accessible hazard button, mm-hmm. all stuff that we have we had 10 years ago. Yeah. But now in some vehicles are buried within the menus. Yeah. I mean, by some vehicles, you mean Tesla, but yeah. Tesla. Yes. Yeah. So no, I, I agree. And look, some buttons are great, but, but it's also like, you know, w- the problem with this key is they're using components out of their other uh, gas powered cars. So it's like you have like a, a batch of buttons that's here. And so, like, you know... The... I'm sorry. Do you remember what Tesla did with the first Model S? Yes. Mercedes switch gear? Which was fine. It worked fine. Yeah. No, I'm not talking about switch gear. I'm talking about, like, you have a batch of controls that are the same buttons you'd find in another vehicle. But then, like, they're 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 just not logically grouped, and there's no way to change them. You know, so it's just... It's it's not a it's not a software-defined vehicle, I guess is my point. No. Well, maybe. No, Again, it's not. I, that, that, that's a loose... It's a loose term. Yeah, so. but it, but it's not, like, not, not every part of it's fully updated. That alone is not a, is not some kind of uh, uh, de, de, uh, uh, what's a disqualifying factor. Well, in, unless you're used to them. You know yeah. what I mean? It's, it's like, kind of like, would, you know, it's like, it's like, like we talk about, the kids who grew up driving uh, EVs are like, why would I get gas? What am I going to do with a gas All car? Right. Next topic. Fine. Uh, Daniel, Daniel Wu. Wu. <laughs> okay. So Daniel Wu is coming on to talk about... Coming uh, back on. Coming back on. He's uh, one of our, maybe our third or fourth return guests. Yeah, third. And uh, hopefully breaking some some big news here, talking yeah. about a new Chinese EV manufacturer he might have some association with, yeah. as well as everything he's been doing since we last talked to him, including some racing. I just saw him in Florida. And uh, some acting stuff, maybe some directing, I don't know, he, new he, merch, new We drove gear. a GT3 RS together, he could review that. It's great. We're going to run out of time talk to him, so why don't we get right to it. Ladies and gentlemen, the return of Daniel Wu. Daniel, thank you for coming back. What's up, guys? Yeah. How you doing? Thanks we're, for having me back. We're good, man. How you doing? Good. Very good. Uh, so I saw you real quick uh, in Florida. Yes, at a racetrack. Saw, yes. Uh, can you just tell everyone uh, what that was and, that and was, how well you did? That was Daytona. Um, the Daytona, the twenty four yeah. hours. Well, yeah, the Rolex. The, the Rolex was the twenty four hours was that weekend, but we were competing in the IMSA Michelin Pilot Challenge. Same thing, which just is the else at Daytona race four Michelin. hour <laughs> TCR endurance race, uh, okay. mixed in with some GT four cars. So driving a Honda Civic Type R, the FK eight, the older one TCR car. Um, and so, actually, when I when I saw you there, I was stressing them out. I it was, was really, this was really hysterical. So, <laughs> like, I was I was trying to find you, and you were like, uh, and I saw you, and you were like, kind of depressed, as depressed as I've ever yes, seen you. Yes, like, yeah. Nothing was going well. No, nothing was going well at all. And we, had, we were about to race, and so like we got there, we were already behind because everyone had done the roar the weekend before, and we right. were one of the few teams that hadn't done that roar and, before the twenty four. Yeah, 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 which is like a basically glorified practice for the twenty four, but also qualifying for the twenty people in the twenty four. Um, but we didn't get that weekend to practice, so 
Um, new car, new team. Me and Tazio, my my co-driver for the past three years, we we were familiar with each other, but it was everything else was new. Never been, never driven. I've driven Daytona once before um, in the Ferrari Challenge School when I did that. Okay. Right. Um, but so, a crazy track. I mean, but a very crazy track, <laughs> right? And to drive it to the extreme, it's like takes a lot. It's it's deceivingly simple looking. Right. But it's actually quite quite complex because like yeah. you have to hit the right braking points at the right time otherwise you're and, and because there's a lot of, it, while it is banked there's a lot of flatness yes. and a lot of turns yes yeah. yes yeah. yes yeah. um and so yeah we're, we're our first practice with wash we had mechanical issues second practice i was so eager to get out there i did the stupid mistake i always do which is cold tires cold brakes i slid out on the chicane and the bus stop and uh smashed the rear of the car um, still cosmetic damage, was able to get out there. But really, we were like a practice behind from being where we should have been. I was like about a second or two off the pace I wanted to be. And so therefore, we qualified last. And so our goal was just don't finish last. Right. <laughs> that was our goal. And, and you finished? We finished fifth. Yeah. So it was pretty it, cool. It was it was awesome to watch because I'm, I'm watching it, and I'm like, you know, you, you know, you're sitting inside of a, the, I was in the BMW suite, and I'm watching, and it's like, you know, woo, six. And I knew you'd started last. Right. And I was like, oh, it must be the car number. And I'm like, you know, I'm looking at my phone. I'm like, no, that, they have a different car. Oh, he's in six. Like, wow, <laughs> yeah. that's pretty good. You yeah. Know? So, How many stints did you uh, do? We just did one stint each, two hours each. So wow. it was four hours. Did you, so you, did you finish it or you started? No, I, I did the starting stint. Nice. So I started, I, that, that was the strategy is kind of have me start so I wouldn't have to be stressed of holding a position in the second half. So try and do as best as you can, and then my co-driver will pick up the slack. Um, and so it ended up being a really smart move because it was got crazy at certain points where there was a lot of crashes mm -hmm. and I was able, because I was in the back, to kind of avoid all of that and kind of cruise through to the front. And so when I was done with my stint, I was in sixth. And then my partner actually got up to second, but we got a penalty, fueling penalty. Right. And then right, we dropped right. back to fifth, but which is fine. I mean, I was happy. Dude, fifth from, from qualifying last? How, yeah. is... How big is the field? Uh, 17 cars, 17 cars in TCR, 45 total in the field. We were 22nd overall. So we even beat Bubba Wallace. So I'm happy. Yeah. And he was in a GT4 car. So. <laughs> um, yeah, but, uh, it was, it was great. It was a really good learning curve. But right when you, when, when you came up to me, I was like in the midst of like, I got to start this race last. How are we going to do this? Blah, blah, blah. I know. Funny. And I was, was trying to hang out. Like, hey, what's up, head. buddy? Like, yeah. talk to me. Uh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then that dude was having you sign everything. Yeah. Oh, he my owned. God. This that guy was, brought yeah. everything in his house. To have Super sweet sign. guy. I love the guy. Yeah, but it was but... a lot of stuff to sign at that moment. So <laughs> yeah, It was pretty great. But then Chris and Lee and Chris was always walked up. Yeah, and Chris and came we up. Nice we were all talking. LA photo and... Yeah, it was cool. Yeah, I saw Good times. I saw a lot of this play out on Instagram. And I was like, where else? No, well, on his feed. I was like, ooh, E, that sounds rough because I saw the wreck. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Was, yeah. yeah. Oh. Well, yeah, great. No, but yeah, we were able to turn uh, the sour grapes into some uh, nice wine. It was good. Nice. We're happy. Congrats. Nice. Uh, and where else? <laughs> have, where else have, have you, you been? been since we last <laughs> chatted? So I literally just got off the plane like, a day ago from Hong Kong. I was in Shanghai in Hong Kong. Nice. Um, just, you know, I've been working there for what, almost 27 years. But because of COVID, yep. I took kind of four years off away because I didn't want to do the quarantine at all. Right. Yeah, smart. Um, so I stayed away. But then last year I did a film there. Um, I went back in July actually for the GT show, which is a, like a, a car show or like SEMA or Tokyo Auto Salon. Mm -hmm. uh, relatively new. I think it started in 2014 or something like that, but it's paused for a couple of years because of COVID. And then last year was the first coming back of it. And then I'm actually going back this year and uh, end of this month. What's that show it. like? Yeah, how, how, how big, how, how big yeah, how is it big? actually relative to <laughs> Tokyo? I've been it's to both Tokyo. It's probably half the size of SEMA, okay. which is still pretty big. It's a couple halls. That's huge. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's very burgeoning. You know, this whole car industry is very new to China, right? Right. Um, uh, you know, was, I've been going back to China since like 1978 when I was four years old. Um, and up until the late 90s, no one could even own a car, right? right it was right. all bicycles and taxi and buses, right? And then the late 90s, people could have private ownership of vehicles. So this is like the first generation of automobile automobile ownership in China, right? And I've kind of get, got to see that happen, right? From, you know, importing, uh, Volkswagen was a huge brand because uh, that was a brand that stayed with Audi Volkswagen with China for a long time. Buick was another Buick brand was that huge. stayed huge. Shanghai, uh, uh, Chiang Kai-shek drove a Buick. Yes. And so... Uh, lots of Buick minivans all over China. But then slowly <laughs> you started to see local brands and uh, maybe other brands that have been retired in other countries like MG and R Rover, I think it is. Yeah. There were in other countries that they bought the rights to those brands and started making those cars. 
And then an evolution of design. You started, like, in the beginning, it was kind of rough right. and raw. Right. And now you're at this stage now where, like, after not being back in four years, it was a humongous change. And that's the EV change, which is totally related to the show. But but in the past four years, the uh, adaption of, of EV technology in cars has been incredible. Like... So when you are on the freeway now, the EV cars have a green license plate and regular cars have a blue license plate. When I was on the freeway, it was about 40% of cars were EV cars. Nice. And these are all brands that are relatively new I've never seen before. Some are based off of, like, there were some EV Buicks, some EV um, right. older cars that I'd seen before. Um, but there were some new brands, startups. Oh, yeah. uh, BYD, Zeker, X-Pang. Yes. Like, all, those. Those. Yeah. Yeah. all those. Yeah. All those. Yeah. All those things. It was uh, happening. And there's a very fast adaptation. It was it was fascinating because Ed and I went to uh, CES and spent a lot of time just talking to everybody and, and, and you know just China was just the nine million pound elephant in the room. Mm. It was like ch- the Chinese auto industry is really taking over. But one of the things was that like during the pandemic, for you know whatever reason, it was just decided uh, by the party that like no more internal combustion. It's right. Like EVs the way right. to is this what you're going to buy? Right. But what they were saying was that the the Chinese like auto enthusiast they'll buy a car and they'll take it back and they're not demanding more horsepower or better handling. They're like, hey, you you just put a faster processor in the new one. Right. I want the better processor. Right. Which is culturally way different. Than totally America. different than us. Yeah. So yeah, we're all about like performance stats, zero to sixty time, blah blah blah. But with them, it's not about that. It's about the tech, but and also about the luxury. Mm. Like yeah. the experience of sitting in the cabin, which was surprising to me because I was like, the build quality has gone up in a big way. Like all these cars have great interiors, really comfortable interiors. Did you get to drive around in any? Yeah. So I got to ride. I went, so I was invited to go see the Jidu, which is Geely and Baidu. Geely is like, you know, they're the big Chinese auto manufacturer. Mm-hmm. They and, own and, Volvo, Lotus, and Lotus yeah, right? Yeah. All Full that. Star, yep. And then Baidu is the Google of China. Right, yep. so ah. this is a joint venture of these two companies trying to combine, um, join forces to make first of all the software, and they're really software focused, and the hardware Geely kind of provides that. So the platform of their car, which is the G zero one, that's available now, it just launched in October. How do you how do you pronounce it? G U A J J I Y U E. Yes, and the company's called G Do, J I D O. Do we one and they have Robo a nose. one right Robo yeah one. the the Robocar they called the Robocar oh, because this car what, the thing about this car is it's about AI powered technology right and so they want it to do basically everything for you right so other than, so it's actually already is uh, stage four level four capable so level right? four autonomous vehicle yes totally so capable just... but it's not turned on yet in their retail cars because it's not been approved yet for level four yeah so level four means it can drive on all roads um, still has to have a steering wheel. The driver can still drive it if they choose to. But if you activate level four, the you know at least in the U.S., the company would assume the liability. So GD would be liable for how right. the car, you know, goes around in the world. But it can do parking garages. It can do highways. Everything. It can do any speed. It was great. Day night weather. Yeah. If yeah. you're playing at home and you're in front of a browser, you want to pull out your phone. Again, GD J I D U. Wait, I I already googled it. You, there's a Wikipedia page. Mm-hmm. Uh, G-I-Y-U-E or RoboCar1, just any combination of those, Mm -hmm. and it'll come up. You will know you're on the right car because I thought it looked a lot like a Kia EV6. Is that true? A a little bit, a little bit. But it's pretty good looking. Yeah, it's pretty good looking. It's very good looking. looking. In fact, I I met the designer, Frank Wu, who's the head of our VP of design at the company, and he's an American-born Chinese. He's ex- no, no, I want to say so I'm showing Ed, but it's like a sexier Toyota or Honda six. Yeah, it's a little sex. It's, got it's like very a well proportioned. Belly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks yeah. There's like little hints of something and from things you've seen before. A little bit, but but it has know. its own character also, right? Yeah. And it's pretty good looking. It's pretty good looking. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm not. I don't not like it. It's pretty good looking. Yeah. Uh, interior was amazing. Um, but the autonomous driving side. So first of all, it has this thing called SEMO. Uh, which is like Alexa or um, Siri, right. right? And you go, uh, Simo, open all the doors. The doors brr, all the doors open. Open the charge port. Open the charge port. Um, and then he gets in the car, and he's like, uh, play a Daniel Wu movie. And then the thing comes <laughs> up, and it's like, which one would you like me to play? And then he plays the first one, and then immediately starts playing on the screen. Somebody next to me might have shared with me some some clips of this. Yes, Could yes. we? Could we... Sh- 
show these? Could we? Yeah, put yeah, yeah, yeah. I can, I can send you. I can yeah. send you them. We'll yeah. put it. We'll yeah. put it. We'll put it. You'll see them in this uh, in the teaser. So right. You'll, you'll and then and then there's the gaming function on it. So he goes, okay, play this game, and then he turns it on, and the steering wheel becomes the steering wheel for the driving game, and the driving game is the whole monitor across the screen, right? So it's really they're really trying to change the way people use vehicles and kind of think about it as like your own man cave in a car and all these kind of cool functions are within it. And, and it's not about necessarily driving specs at all. Right. 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 Speed, performance, and I mean, it's all not that. decent. 3.9, 0.60. That's right? very decent. That's fast, right? Yeah, no, that's I was going to say, I saw the right? specs and the specs were like, yeah, that's, that's really but good. But they're not trying to like, go, oh, okay, we're trying to do sub twos or whatever. Yeah, they're not, right, they're not right. that's the point. Because in that, right? who cares? Right. Uh, <laughs> one question, because I saw the clip. I, I care. I, care I, 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 saw, I saw the clip and you describing it then brings up a question. If these, this company is successful and they sell a bunch of these and we all go to Ikea and we're walking in there and there's five of these cars parked within shouting distance of each other and you go, <laughs> hey, Simu, open all the doors. So that's where the AI technology comes in. It starts to recognize your voice and your uh, patterns after a while. So eventually it knows your voice, your right, tone, right? Right, okay. right? I mean, And it would probably be a combination of your phone pinging it and your yeah, voice. Probably a connection sensor, of all that, okay. right? Okay. Yeah, all yeah. Right. Um, but yeah, a very amazing. Then they have an 07 that's coming out, which is a sedan, very sexy looking sedan. I just sent you that like recently. Oh, uh, I'm, the, okay. They, yeah, I didn't look at that. Um, yet. Yeah, and yeah. then they have a full size SUV for 25, I think. And it looks, you know, it's Range Rover size, full on luxury, massive vehicle. Right. Wow. And then they took me into this other room where they have this, <laughs> they're designing the supercar. Right. So it's like a hyper car. <laughs> right. Right. Basically. Um, and it's going to be revealed in July at the Beijing Auto Auto Show. And what I just saw was just a, a carbon fiber shell sure. and, a, and a, a temporary frame underneath. But they're moving very fast. So they get to a point where they can have an actual functioning car so, by so then. So let me ask you, like, how – because I'm familiar, like, with how quickly China can do things right. and how slowly kind of the rest of the automotive industry right. is doing things. Well, you know, like the Koreans seem to be moving pretty quick. When you talk to your car friends, like, right. do, do, are they like staring at you like, what are you talking about? Like Chinese what? Or, or do they kind of like sense that maybe you know something? You mean my friends here? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think some of them know, some of them are aware. A lot of them have no idea. They're like, cause they still think of like China as making like cheap products. Right. Right. right sure. And, and, and that's the thing is like the quality of these things are amazing. The build quality, like the interior, everything, like the luxury thing that they're going for is definitely there. And then the price point is insane. It's like that. Oh, one is $30,000. Right, <laughs> so, so, so oh, I'm sorry, thirty thousand dollars. Yeah, thirty thousand yeah. dollars. Twenty one. So, 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 so zero to sixty in, in three point eight seconds, and AI and level four autonomy for. Do you know what bat? Is it a? Thousand. Do you know the bat? Is it LFP battery? And that I'm not 100 percent sure. I okay, don't know this it might have been in the PDF, but it was. Probably. It was, but it looked like they were showing the skeleton of the thing in the PDF you sent. It was like, yeah. boy, that's a modern but vehicle. Let me ask yes. you know. before you. Before you returned to China, had, had was was G2 on your radar at all? No, because friends? they are only about two years old, like very young. <laughs> They're very very young. This whole thing. But and Geely's a lot older. So, so yeah, that's the thing is they're able to use the hardware from Geely. So their their attitude is like, the hardware is going to be developed no matter what, and so we'll let Geely deal with that. We're going to work on the software, right? The user interface, the AI, all that kind of stuff, and then the styling, right? And so they right. put this styling over. This platform is probably used in Geely for the Lotus and for yeah, it Volvo. is. We actually, yeah. I actually yeah. googled it. It's yeah. the uh, it's the SEA platform that Geely develops, and it does underpin the Polestar Four. Yes, yeah. yeah. And the Lotus. How do you say it? Electra. 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 Yeah. yeah. Which is I, I, which I wrote in that actually also. Uh, yeah. The Electra is pretty dope. I yeah. Say. So, that's, but you know, that's and, a and, pretty nice yeah. little SUV. End idea. of the day, it's it's a skateboard. It's a yeah. skateboard chassis yeah. like everybody else has. Yeah. Battery. But, but it's it's interesting motors. though because. Because like we've no, you know, GM came up with the skateboard chassis in the oh, like yeah. 2001 yeah, yeah, or something, yeah, and, and famously guy. did nothing with it. Um, but like China's like, great, we're gonna run with it, and 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 they're really you're seeing the potential of to, it. To like, Daniel's point, it's more it's more about everything else they're laying on top of it, which right. is the software, the AI, the technology, the, and then the styling piece, which they're really good. We talk again, we talked to the guy at MIH, Mobility oh, and Harmony, yes. contract manufacturing, like. China knows how to build all of our consumer electronics, which yeah. increasingly are like aluminum, carbon fiber, mm -hmm. titanium, mm -hmm. and with microchips and screens on them. Yeah, so, and like, so, you know, you have a good design, like the iPhone, and it's like, you know, hey, Foxconn, build it. And yep. like, 
and you know do it cheaply yeah. and, and do it really well. Like how reliable is your iPhone? Like pretty, pretty bulletproof. Right. You know. Right. So right. Um, pretty crazy. You got you went on a tear just now. I just want to tell you, like that was amazing. It was a, a incredible uh, brain dump. But I wanted, I, <laughs> I had a, I had a really terrible. Probably offensive joke I was going to make about you oh, going to the, about the SEMA <laughs> of China, which is because I've been going to SEMA for a long time. Right. Um, what are the knockoff parts like at a, <laughs> at, at a SEMA show, a SEMA like show in China? Where are they from? Yeah, so, Thailand. So everything from China there, right? But you know that said, there's still the main brands like BBS, Brembo, blah blah blah, all that. But it's all shown by the local distributors. Okay. Um, I think increasingly now that people are flying in for it now, so we'll see in this one at the end of March uh, if there's going to be actually uh, foreign brands coming in for that. But there's a lot of local brand stuff that I had no idea what that was, right? I'd never seen before. Is right? there, is there, and I'm I'm going to ask you, well, we're going to have to have you on again after you come mm -hmm. back from the show, but one of the <laughs> questions I want to know is, because you, you got a Spoon Sports uh, sweatshirt on. Right. Are there OG, legit, Chinese tuning brands or aftermarket parts brands emerging on a scale of like your your HKS, your Greddy, BBS. So, BBS, well, so I think they're. Oh, you're saying the JDMs? Yeah yeah, 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 like a like a it, CDM. It, yeah, yeah. yeah, like some kind of tuner. Or, yeah, yes. CDM. So the so the issue with that is technically that stuff is illegal. So you're not supposed to modify yeah. a car, right? It's very strict in Hong Kong, right? Mm -hmm. Like if you oh, put yeah. a spoiler on a car, you can get arrested for that, right? Or pulled over, right? Uh, in China, it's a little bit looser, but technically, like we can't even say it's an aftermarket car parts show. Like you have to say, use a different terminology and say it's a car parts show, right? Um, <laughs> but like technically, you're not supposed to, but there's many, many companies. Because so, they're so, all making them for export, which yeah. is hilarious. Yes, yes. They're making them for export anyway. But now, but now there's companies making stuff for um, local brands. So there's a, like what the company that brought me there last year is a company that makes over 600 accessories for this one Jeep called the Tank. It's a, it's like the mainland Chinese version. Great Wall makes it, yep. and it looks like a Jeep Wrangler, a little bit better looking than a Jeep Wrangler, but it's their version of it. And there's enthusiasts are like tons of overlanders and all that kind of stuff in China. Um, but that stuff is still illegal to put on. Like so, like, technically it is. So it's got. So in right. other words, it's not enforced. Yeah, it's not really enforced. It's like Cuban but, cigars. But if you got pulled legal. over, somebody could charge you for that. Right. 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 So there's a gray area, and they need to figure that out because this is all so new right. that. Really what it, the law is for is they don't want people tuning their car to like, you know, 700 horsepower and tearing up the streets and killing people, right? Um, and some dumbass asshat at the, that show last July in his Audi decided to do some crazy move right in the, so there's a big lobby at the front of the th building. It was raining like crazy. He comes flying in and just loses control of the car. And luckily it slid to the left where a bunch of people were lined up to park into a parking lot. It took out like four cars, but the other side was like a hundred people standing uh, to get inside, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so all that behavior that we've experienced here over a long time. Mustangs leaving car shows? <laughs> yes, yes. Has happened, happened over there, right? right? But really, I think the laws are for, getting back to that, is to prevent people from crazily doing crazy mods on their cars, right? So I think eventually the accessories and the overland stuff and body kits and blah, 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 that'll be allowed um, because people want to individualize their things. 1.4 billion people, everyone's got the same access right. to the same cars. They want to start to individualize. But I think... Tuning may be a difficult one. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, accessories, I think that's okay. Visual stuff, aesthetic stuff. Is well, fine. and the other thing about, you know, EVs, and um, we've had a couple EV tuners on the program, like, it's really hard to, like, tune the hardware. In other words, it's yes. hard to make a faster motor. It's hard yeah. to make the software, like, crack the OEM. Make the battery discharge faster. Yeah. Right. yeah. Now, what you, you can do suspension, you can do brakes, you can do wheels and tires and right. aero. And that probably isn't really going to, like, change the safety too much. No. You know, I mean, yeah. it could if you put bad tires or sure. whatever. Yeah. Sure. So. Or, you know, crazy stance or whatever, which some people are there into. Hey. But <laughs> I love crazy stance. <laughs> yeah, I'm in the minority, yeah, yeah. but I, I think it looks so cool. Uh, let me ask you something just, just odd because I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get myself to China for the Beijing show okay. uh, to, to, to look at a lot of these, yeah. these manufacturers. You, you really I'm, should I'm, go. I'm trying to go, too. We're, we're, tr we're trying to go. It's pretty mind-blowing. And even, like, I went from Shanghai – back to Hong Kong where it was more traditional brands yeah. of cars. It just it felt like we stepped back like two years. Wow. Just the shapes of the cars, everything. Because wow. in China now, it's like probably 60% of the cars on the road are domestic cars, right? 
And so all of them have a kind of new look makeover mm -hmm. to them. Some of them look very similar, whatever, but, but it's a different look than what I'm used to here or in the West mm -hmm. or whatever. So the next day flying into Hong Kong and looking at the cars around, it's like still the old kind of things we've been doing. Right. It felt like we had to step back a couple of years. That's it was, wild. It was well, weird. And then in two years, it'll be like, it won't be 60%, it'll yeah. be 100% in yeah. Shanghai. And it's kind of amazing. I mean, China, like I, like I said, I've been going back since I was, I was a young kid. And so it's always been kind of behind. And then suddenly it just took this leap forward. Great leap forward. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. Oh, so, <laughs> phrase it better. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, but let me ask you, does that, does the same apply to, um, everything else? Just getting around because this is the one thing I'm sort of dreading. Like I got, do I got to get a new, I have to get another phone. I got to install some apps to get into the country. I have to get WeChat and Weibo. Yes. And all that, right? So, and I got to attach a credit card to it. Is this is any of that true? All that true? Kind of, sort of, because nobody takes cash or credit card anymore, really. Jesus. So I don't even have that set up because I don't going back, and I'm not going back enough. And so I have to set it up next time I go back. So I had to have my my uh, assistant buy stuff for me because I don't have that system set up. But everything is through the phone now. So wow. um, you, you go to the like, wet market, like yeah. where you would buy like, you know, yeah. pork intestines or whatever, right. and you got to pay with an app, right? And they've got a little thing, scan it, blah, 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 and they get it, all that stuff. No one wants to take cash. I have some leftover cash from before. I was trying to spend it, and they're like, nah, nah, I don't want that. I don't want that. Nobody wow. wants it, right? Wow. It's in, and I was actually had to pay an assistant in cash, right? And I was getting my per diem and paying him. He's like, now, now I gotta go to the bank and put this in the bank. It's like, bang, it's like blah, blah. You know, it's it's very. It's, it's so funny that I remember it, wait, where the iPhone was 2011 that came out. No, seven, two thousand seven. So, yeah, I think it was seven. But I remember, like, you know, reading about it, and mm -hmm. they're like, and one day you won't use your wallet anymore. And I'm right. like, that's. Like, you know, no, no, but no. like it's it's, it's here. not that many years later. I mean, you're here. you're slightly different in that you're world famous, but the privacy stuff. Do you carry a do you carry like a burner phone when you go there or no? I have a phone with I have a phone with a local number on it. Okay, um, that's just for like local for calls and data, really. But it's only just to save on data, okay. <laughs> data roaming, <laughs> really, not, not to burn. But um, but yeah, there is all that. But then there's also like. Crime is an all-time low because now there's CCTVs everywhere that have facial recognition, yeah. right? And so this is a really interesting thing. So during the Chinese New Year, which is when I was there, um, there was a mandate to all the um, – anyone who works for the government, they cannot go to these restaurants, these – just to spend money, right? Because normally, traditionally, Chinese New Year yeah. is the time of year where you spend a crap ton of money, right? And they didn't want people doing that anymore. So – there, there's a list of like these luxury restaurants that were all banned and no one dares to go because there's CCTV everywhere. And if you get your face, they'll know, uh -huh. they'll know that you went. And so the, these restaurants were like empty when I was there, very half full, you know, half huh. full. What, what was the logic behind that? The logic is it looks bad for government officials to be spending ah, lots of money, got right? It, got it. And got they don't want yeah, they yeah, don't yeah. want that happening, and especially right. since the wave of corruption that they were dealing with before, right? right? That, that was like when it was like it looks bad for government officials to buy foreign auto brands. Sure, like, sure, stop, yeah. Get yeah, rid yeah. of your Bentleys. Yes, yeah. Now yeah. it's like they're controlling like how they got spend it, money and blah blah blah, and how it. how it looks to the regular regular person, right? Um, well, but yeah, so there's there's a lot of advancements going on there for better or for worse. That's how do you but how do you feel about the because I tell you what, like the the weird thing for me is I go to I've gone to Japan a ton. My mm -hmm. brother lives there, and like Japan used to be what I think China is now becoming. In that you know they had I remember going in the early two thousands and people were watching TV on their mobile phones. They had the flip mobile phones mm -hmm. with te television mm -hmm, feeds on mm -hmm. it and everything else. They, you know they had all the cool disc men and mini disc players right, and right, all that stuff, right? right. Japan's still fundamentally a cash society, right? Yeah. You go around and you oh, have to, yeah. you, oh, get, yeah. you yeah. go walk into out in the street and to go to any convenient little uh, 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 you know uh, machine vending, vending machine yep. and get a hot coffee. Yen coin, yeah, coins, exactly. Yep. But Japan's stuck in 1996. Like you know what I mean? Like like they have the thing. True. They, they, they have the thing where you you know you you go to the the ramen joint and you have a like a. Terminal you order at, yeah, yeah the ticket but comes the ticket out. But right. that's the thing. That's 1996 technology. I don't hate, I don't hate it though. That's no, the no, thing about cool. Japan though is they're very advanced, but they're very stuck in certain traditional ways, right? right? And right. then processes, which is why I feel like all the Japanese car brands are behind the EV scene, right? A lot way of behind. them are yeah. way oh, behind, yeah. just because to get something through an executive level it takes. Fucking, oh. It's like running a marathon, and it's a jobs yeah. program. Cars are jobs in in Japan, like all, on par with Germany. Yeah, the, right. The, so, um, just. Oh, shoot, I lost the question. Um, so you were just saying that China is where Japan was. It's just like, you know, phone for everything, yeah. cashless, electric cars, self-driving is yeah. coming. Just the the um, 
the no look back embrace of new technology yeah. that like we don't have uh, and Japan we feel like used to have but like, it's literally it's does a, not it's a have. very interesting look at the future because it is very high tech but then the old rule like old stuff is still there too on top of it all right like the always vision of like sci-fi movies of this clean pristine mm. science fiction future is not true at I've, all. I've been to it's, Beijing yeah and, and the reason why <laughs> I think Blade Runner is very close to reality and that right. it is going to be a mix of stuff it's never going to be you just wipe something away and then you bring in something new it's right it's going right. to be so you still see like you know a motorcycle driving down the street with all this furniture on it right like yeah, crap like yeah. that no, you, yeah um, those weird three wheel uh, semi truck and things. you still see people like welding with no masks and yeah. do odd stuff like yeah, that yeah 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 but at the same time you have this advanced future where like even at the wet market where you know right. they're still only taking your phone pay you know i remember my question crazy. and now there's and now there's two of them uh -oh. um so one <laughs> of the one of the big themes other than i keep reading about i'm i've been intensely following the china market and the cars uh and then also like this whole thing where I know Evergrande, the real estate is collapsing uh, over there. But the other big narrative coming out is like youth unemployment, like all time high. Did you see any, did you see any evidence of that? Was that like, oh yeah, people talking about it? Or is that a narrative that's like a Western? It was probably really hard for me to judge that only being there like four days and being like shuttled around to places. Okay. So I didn't really see that. Um, people talking about it at all or no? What I was mostly hearing about was like my friends that are my age talking about how younger people don't work as hard as they did, you know, which is the same. <laughs> I mean, I mean, no one ever hear. says that in the U.S. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. It was funny to hear the same conversation. Right, right, having, right. It's like, I can't, yeah. I can't like yell or even criticize my employee anymore because they'll just walk. Right. You know, that kind of stuff. Hmm. Um, very similar. Very, okay. very similar. Although culturally totally different. Um, um, yeah, I don't. Uh, it was hard for me to see that. Okay. And I was in sectors. I was looking around in sectors where I was like looking at e-commerce and things like that, which is very robust right now. So people were a lot of people working and tons of people working very hard okay. and doing that kind of stuff. Let me ask you a question. So, so Jidu, why did they show you this car? Uh, yeah. Uh, we're talking about some kind of future working together. Okay. Um, not necessarily brand ambassador stuff, but they wanted me to look at their brand and see what they're doing and see how they're different than everybody else. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Um, and and, it, and it's true. They're very uh, software focused, the user interface focused, because um, their perspective is like the, the hardware is going to change and that'll change over time, but you want to have the proprietary um, uh, software that works really well always. And that's going to be the key to making it work well. And so like there's a car company, Hi-Fi, you heard of them. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. just, they're about to go under. Right, and so other companies are looking to buying them out right now because they just made the platform, but the the thing doesn't function very well. Right, right, and so it looks kind of cool. It looks like an electric car, blah blah blah, but the user interface and software is not the greatest on it. Not up to spec, yeah. and that's yeah. what the Chinese consumer is into. I guess so. Yeah, yeah. I mean, are this... you are you known as like a car dude in China now? Now, like with everything that I did, I've been doing here with the car builds and all that. It all went over there. Okay. So oh, everyone it did. knows okay. about like the S eight hundred I built for and, like Sima, student driver, and student driver, and the racing I've been doing. I raced in China last year. Oh, no kidding. Um, at the Shanghai, how was, was that? China Touring Car Championships. Uh, drove the FL five TCR car in that. Uh, it was good, but very aggressive. Yeah, I like, bet. Super aggressive, the drivers. Like, so aggressive that I had to, like, back off a little bit because I didn't want to crash the car. Good? So I, ended I mean, up how's the skill, like... Pretty, pretty good skill level. Like, much better than I expected, but very... I mean, I think most touring car races, even the British touring car ones, it, they're very aggressive. I mean, in the race, I saw a car go upside down. I saw people purposely crashing each other. There was a mm -hmm. lot of mm -hmm. craziness. So I kind of just stayed back. I didn't do as well yes. on that one. Older and wiser. Yes. Though. And you yes. lived. Yeah. <laughs> and they must... Are they all, like, super young? Not really. Like, there's oh. people around my age. So there's a lot of... Hong Kong drivers yeah. that were been around for the past like 10, 15 years have been doing it all over Asia. And then younger mainland Chinese drivers, probably in the 30s, but not really super young, but a lot of burgeoning people coming. It's like, not like the carting. It's not like this. the the, the, the guys are coming up from the young. The young not, that's coming yeah, because okay. th that next generation is those kids, right? Okay. Those kids that are carting right now. Yeah, and um, simulators. Yeah, the kids and the simulators. simulators. Like, yeah, yeah, have you yeah. raced, have you done Macau? Have you raced I, So I was supposed to do it this year, but I, I didn't do it at the last minute. I couldn't. I, so there was another celebrity named Aaron Kwok. He's yeah. like a very famous uh -huh. singer. He was racing in the same series. There's a rule because years ago, 
a bunch of celebrities showed up at an event and people got trampled, right? So there's a rule now that no two people can show up at the same event. <laughs> <laughs> only one, right? only right. one Only celebrity. one dreamy heartthrob at a time. <laughs> so Macau. so if, that one race that I went to in Shanghai, he wasn't, he couldn't come. Oh, that's wild. Right? And then the Macau one, he went to, I could have gone to that because it was outside of mainland. It was Macau, right? Right. But um, a bunch of factors that couldn't work out. I, I'm kind of glad it... Are you faster than him? Come on, just say it. But Macau is sketchy, man. I know. Macau that's why. Super it's, sketchy. it's legit. So For actually, F1 track. that's the first track I've ever raced on. Yeah. I've never drove on in, in, in my whole life. So in 2000, I was asked to drive a Ferrari. I think it was, a, what's the 2 plus 2 one? It was in around 2005. 599. And 599, yeah. It was not a great car to be driving on that track. Yeah. Um, or 612. 612. But it was. 612. 612. Maybe 612. Yeah, maybe yeah. it was 612. But um, now I can't even remember. But the point is, it was a. In between the races, they had the Ferrari and Lamborghini Club out there, and the movie company of the movie that I was promoting, the boss's car was in that thing, and so they wanted me to drive around with the movie company logo sticker all over it, right? And so I drove that course for the first time, and it was... I didn't what's, know then to be scared. <laughs> what's sketchy about it? Just from oh, because it's all walls. It's, it's, it's all walls. It's, it's, it's a, a street city, course. It's a street course uh, uh, in uh, Macau. Uh, uh, okay. And, fun fact, uh, Michael Schumacher raced there in... Everybody's famous 16 valve Mercedes Benz, the Benz 190, mm -hmm. uh, 3.2, the the Cosworth. Um, 2.5. Hocken, Hockenden's been there. Yeah, sorry, 2.5. Hockenden's been out there. I think Senna. I think Senna's raced because it's also it's a it was a Formula One. Okay, yeah, 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 I think yeah. it's like I've, the I've, I've, it's like the Monte Carlo of Asia. Really. Yeah, it's like it bananas. feels like that. Okay. Yeah, because you're up in the hills and you come but, back but down. Walls the are water. walls are sketchy. Walls yeah, yeah. everywhere. Well, it's and, very tight. and it's and very rough. tight. There's only probably like two places you could possibly pass. Right. And then there's other places where obviously people try to and you know, there's all crashes every year. People die every year. There was that super famous wreck. Uh, where that girl, yeah, massive pileup. Oh, right, I was thinking right, it was right, F right. one car, F four yeah. car. She flew, yeah. into the the reporter stand, yeah. right. Yeah. And if that reporter stand wasn't there, which is this big steel tower, she would have gone straight into the lobby of this hotel yeah. and probably would have died for sure. But she broke her back. I mean, yeah. she still broke her back. But the speed of that she flew into that thing with it was, it was like insane. a torpedo. Yeah. It was fast. Was she in a Lamborghini? No, it was, I think it was, it was an F4. F4 car, it was a Formula, Formula car. Oh, okay. yeah, it was a Formula oh I, know, I know who that was. Yeah, she yeah, hit yeah, something yeah, further yeah. down the straight. Right, and right. And it was that. Went airborne. The famous turn, turn Lisboa. It's yes. a right angle turn in front of and that she casino. Just went straight up just and up in the air right, and right, right into right. the into the. If you get a chance to yeah, go to Hong Kong, dangerous. yeah, and then you can also take a side trip to Macau. Yeah, it's definitely worth checking out. And then you have to get the the potat. This is the the dantat. It's a special this egg, egg tart. Ca egg tart. Oh, okay. Portuguese That's egg tart. Portuguese right. egg tart. Oh, yeah. Macau is a Portuguese yeah. colony, yeah. right? White. It's it's different from the traditional one you get at dim sum. It's white on top, and they and they it's, burn it. A little it's like it got little little creme brulee. Yeah, 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 exactly. It's so good. I mean, Very look, good. Hong Kong's on the list of like, I gotta go. Oh, yeah. I gotta, yeah, you gotta go. go. I gotta yeah. I mean, Hong Kong is interesting, the car culture there also. It's like amazing how rich and vibrant the car culture is there, considering there's no place to drive, really. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. there's a camera every kilometer, basically, anywhere. So, it's, it's like it's, Miami. Yeah. You can't get away with driving fast. <laughs> not, not that there's cameras, there's just nowhere to literally no good roads. But, like, well, no, the no, actually, super... there's there's some really nice roads to drive, but no, you no, just can't. No, no, not Miami. You just yeah, can't, yeah, let, it, can't yeah, let it go. Yeah, you can't let it go. Um, right, right, right. So my, my other question about now that you've, you know, we talked to you, we were, we were in this weird position of coming out of the pandemic and not having done, uh, your 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 acting, your mm -hmm. all of the stuff that you would become super famous for. You mm -hmm. move back here. Mm -hmm. Now that you've gone back, spent some time, you going back? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, like, to, are you gonna move? Are you just, no, is, no. I don't where's, think. Where's, to, where's home gonna be? Home is still here right now in Los Angeles. Um, I mean, we'll see what happens after this election. I have, have to move or not. I've, I've said it before. I'm like, yeah. if this happens again, I might have to move. Yeah, but, right. Um, yeah, it was not good those four years if for being a minority in this country mm. uh, during that time. No matter what you believe about his policies, it was rough. Yeah. Right. But um, yeah, I'm not sure where I would go. Okay. You know, I, I thought about that. But, but I definitely can, will continue because my plan before COVID was to do a project there a year and a project here the, a year, right? Um, and because of COVID and I, the fact that I didn't want to quarantine at all, right. like made me stay here for four years. And then going back when filming that movie in, in uh, October, it was, it was a nice feeling. Um, making movies there is slightly different than making movies here. Um, here tends to be movies and TV shows. Everything is creatively done by committee, like mm -hmm. a lot of people, right? A lot of people make decisions. A lot of people right. have notes. A lot of people. Whereas over there, it's pretty much like the auteur way of doing things, which is the director is the say-all and be-all of, of everything, right? Yeah. And so 
I really miss that relationship of having a relationship with a director and creating something and making mm -hmm. something. Whereas like here, it's not that simple. You know, there is that, but only a select few of directors have that autonomy. Right, right. And then a lot of times, like, you know, I was working on several TV shows here where it's like, hey, I have a question about this. And they're like, oh, uh, that director is only there for this episode and they're not doing the other episodes. So they don't know. It was like a continuity question about how this flows into the other stuff. It's like, why don't you go ask the writer? So I go to the writer, the writer, the writer's like, oh, I just wrote this episode. I'm not, I didn't write that episode. Right, so right. I don't know. And I'm like, so nobody can answer my question about what, <laughs> about this thing, right? Um, so, you know, I miss that intimacy of like, Mm. being tight with the creator and 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 making something special that way a single vision yes a single vision but speaking of uh, the other way my my son and i watched uh, abc oh. and uh, yeah, it was Chinese. it no. was really cool yeah it was a, i really yeah. enjoyed working on that show it was the first time okay so my whole career was mostly was in asia but as an american i was always an outsider no matter how they accepted me i always felt slightly culturally different than everybody mm -hmm. right and then coming back here working on you know westworld working on reminiscence working on tomb raider all those things i'm still a minority in in a mostly right. white production right so still an outsider right, right. so american born chinese was the first time i worked with like it was 90% asian american crew oh, that's and good. we've all had similar backgrounds a lot of people are you know you know, costume designers, art directors, whatever, great on their own who've made it through their way right. as minorities in this business. And then finally all kind of Voltroning together on this one project. It was really cool to feel like, oh, we're all coming from the same place and we all feel the same here. Mm -hmm. And we all know what the story we're trying to tell is and how important it is um, to all of us culturally. And so um, it was just felt really special. It was really awesome. It, it was for me, you know, it was because, you know, I would say it's a show aimed at like slightly young, young adults, mm -hmm, sure. let's say. But for, for sure. me, like, I, I just love mythology and I just, mm. I know nothing about Chinese mythology. Oh, right, so right. it was like a really fun way to like learn, not only really learn, but then like, yeah. Uh, yeah, the monkey, exactly. But then learn, but also like, you know, share it with my son where, yes. you know what I mean? Where oh, it's yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, because he has a book on mythology and it was, you know, I'm like, look, that monkey, that's my buddy. You know, yeah, that's, that was probably my favorite part about it is to, Monkey King is like, I don't know, it's like Robin Hood for, for Chinese kids or Asian kids in general, like yeah. not even just yeah, Chinese, yeah. Right. Japanese, uh, right. uh, anybody Korean, they all know the myth of mm -hmm. uh, the Monkey King because it's about, basically it's a lore about how Buddhism came to East Asia, right, from India. And so the Monkey King was part of this group of people who brought the Buddhist scriptures from India to the to the East or to the, to the Near East. And so to be able to share that mythology with a newer audience, an American audience, you know, you get a little taste of it and you can dive much deeper into it, but it's a, it's an awesome story and fable that we all grew up with. So to be able to share that with other people is, was right. great. Yeah. No, I thought it was really cool. It was, it was just a fun show. It was a bummer yeah. though that it, that it did not continue. Yeah. Right? One yeah. and done. And yep. then I just, oh, it, I mean, it's topical. Yeah, we're, we're done. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, streaming's hard. Yes. Brother, well, yes. <laughs> the brother's son, another, another one, another yes. one also went one. I didn't see that one. One season and got rave reviews. Yes. And now also subsequently canceled. So this is why, this is part of why I'm like focusing back on Asia again, because I'm like, you know, with all the diversity and inclusion, it was great for Asian Americans for a few years, but I'm like, the cynical side of me is like, okay, is yeah, that, like, is that it now? First yeah, they I gave Ki yeah, yeah, and yeah, Michelle right. the Oscar and like, that. Well, that's good now, now we're gonna choose the next group, right? right? You know, yeah, is, yeah, it, yeah. is it is it lip service or not? Right. So I'm not 100% sure. I hate, yeah, I hate that, that, I hate that you you said it that way, that it's sort of like, ah, this seems like a DEI kind of play because it would be it would be much more meaningful if it wasn't, if it was like. The, the important thing is what we did with those opportunities was do something meaningful. It yeah. wasn't just fluff, right? It yeah. was good, yeah. And yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. out there and that's that's great and they will be out there for a while, but is there a continuation of this? Is there, right. is there a, a commitment? Yeah, and I think phase two is really next, the next phase is like, you know, not just making Asian American stories, but just integrating all of us into yeah, exactly. projects all together with exactly. all of us, right? And Why? you're seeing it with some actors, you know, like 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 uh, Sandra Lowe mm -hmm. and um, uh, Sandra Oh and yeah. uh, Aquafina. Like, you know, Aquafina, mm -hmm. I would say, is like broken through. Like, yes. she's in everything. Yes, constantly. Yeah. Yes, you know. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, I'll just say right now, Daniel Wu for James Bond. <laughs> oh, well, it's his too. accent. Perfect. He's from Hong Kong. What are you talking about? I've got it. I've got it. He spent a lot of time in Hong Kong. He's, 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 Hong Kong's a British colony. It's, you can make, we totally make it work. Uh, MI6 okay. got an office okay. out there, probably. <laughs> okay. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, not anymore. Sorry. It's, uh... Yeah. <laughs> That's right. That, right that, that office is long gone. <laughs> <laughs> or not. Or, right. or, let's or go back is it? Or is it? Let's that's, go back to that's cars. That's the plot. So last time yeah. we hung out, 
<clears throat> GT3 RS. And yes. you showed up to drive the GT3 RS in your GT3 Touring. Touring, yes. Yeah, manual. Yes. Um, I just want to have a, like, a direct comparison right away. And what did you Winner think? Winner is? Uh, well, <laughs> the GT3 RS is an amazing, crazy car because of all the adjustability in it, right? Like, yeah. You don't have that in the Touring, right? And so the Touring, you, you have to deal with the set suspension as it is, whereas... The GT3 RS, you can just turn everything down and be it's softer than the Touring is. You know? Isn't that wild? It's yeah, like, it was crazy. It, it's a better street car. It's right. weird. Yeah, and then and then things like that DRS. I didn't think I would be able to feel a difference, but there there was a there was a stark difference between yes. having. Yes. Uh, how fast were you driving when you felt this the difference? I knew the speed limit. <laughs> I mean, does does Mall Holland Drive have a speed limit suddenly? That yeah, we know well, that. <laughs> now that most of it's washed away, I don't know. Um, but we ha we had some fun, and it, yeah, I I have rarely connected with a car the way I did with that thing because it was right. it just having the ability to be like this road surface has changed, click 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 click, and suddenly I've adjusted the car to it. Yes, in, and in almost an endlessly not endlessly but almost endlessly variable way, like you know, right. like because. A 911, it's so much weights on the rear. You really are adjusting the rear rebound and compression different than the front. Mm -hmm. And it was, I just love that thing. And a few years ago, probably like six, seven years ago, I probably would have not thought that was so important because I didn't know as much about that stuff as before. Now right. with the racing, and you have some, that, some of that adjustability in racing as well, like I realized like, well, how important it is to to the driver and his customization of the experience for the individual driver, right? Yeah, what and, he and, likes. and the individual road. Like right, I was right. one of the other cool things is you can you adjust the um, the diff locking, uh, both on throttle mm. and off throttle. Mm. And so, like you know, if you have a really tight road, you set it up that when you come off throttle. Uh, you know, like open it real fast. Yes. That upsets the rear yes. and it will point you. But if you're on a long sweeper road, no, let's keep it kind of the same. I don't yes. want any interruption. And I, I just like, I just fell in love with it. I was yeah, just like, it's incredible. And also, car. The, because that wing, like, the, it's visually daunting because that wing is so <laughs> big, right? Yeah, and it's yeah. like, you kind of feel like an ass driving that thing around. But the, they did a really smart thing. I, I feel like that all the time. Well, so I said, well, here's the thing, though. It's like when you're in it, you don't see the wing at all. No, like it's not right. there. It's yeah, like, yeah. So then you don't necessarily feel it. And you don't necessarily have that sense of being like that that dildo that driving around, that douchebag driving yeah, around yeah, yeah. L.A. of all places in that car. But would you, you – but you're a race car driver, so yeah. you would have a place to go drive this. But yes. would you – it's too expensive to go track track days with it or would you I would probably out? push it pretty hard I would I would try to I mean honestly the price of that car is the same as a 911 cup car and you're I, and I've driven the cup car like the, the GT3 is probably I mean we did a story I just don't we, know who, who we actually did a story they're they're real similar you know like mm. but if you wouldn't are you really going to adjust all the, the tune it for your everyday drive I did method? constantly constantly so I I you know I was driving it um, and if you turn everything off, then you're just on the, the springs, right? So you're just literally sitting yeah. on the springs and it's like super soft, get on the freeway, the road's a little bit better, Hang turn it all up the... and then get on the mountain. And then you, you, you know, it's yeah. just, you start my, playing. My, my mentality was the same as you. Like right before I got in it, I was like, I'm not going to touch these things. Right. And then he started getting me playing with them. I'm like, holy it's a huge difference, right? And like the comfort <laughs> mode was like super comfortable. I was very surprised with that. Well, it was funny. I wasn't expecting that to be that streetable, you know. Yeah, if, if I may name drop, uh, Seinfeld's been going on about how it's the best uh, riding GT3, and I was mm. like, he's nuts. Like, what's he talking about? And then I drove the thing, and I just started playing with it. And I was like, oh, I can make it really comfy. Like, how many? Is, how many parameters are we talking about? Well, okay, so you have uh, both rebound and compression, and you have nine clicks for each corner. So if you wanted to, you could do the left and the no. I'm sorry, uh, sorry uh, for each for each end. So you have, so yeah, you have, yeah, you have, you have uh, uh, nine points for front rebound, nine points for rear rebound, nine points for front compression, rear compression. Then you have the diff, diff slot, right. on on power off power, and I think that's. Oof, probably nine clicks as well. Uh, then you have uh, nine clicks of stability control. Yes. Then you have DRS. Right. So you have a lot of different things. How many things. DRS? Was just one. Just on just or off. Just on or off. Yeah. But it, it is. What about shift hardness? Uh, no. It, oh, yes. You have three. You have, you have, you have, yeah. And, and that, the way it's defaulted is normal, sport, sport plus, right. and, and the shifts go quicker. But right. what you can do is. You, you have to put it in Sport Plus, or I think it's called Track in the mm -hmm. GT3 RS, to adjust everything. But then you can customize, uh, you can go to normal shift. So you can drive uh, around uh. town shifting 
like normally if you want or right. Sorry, four, crazy shift. four shift modes? Three. Three. Three shift modes, yeah. So it was... So you have 39,366 <laughs> co- potential combinations we're talking about, that's not, and that's not too many. Uh, I think there's even more. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. That, so that, is that, it, and that, 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 used to, that scared me at first, because I was like, this, I might not remember how to get back to the one I really liked, right? Yeah. But it was just, it was so simple. Like, you just... As long yeah. as it's simple, because yes. you know, you know my big complaint, which was when we were driving that M5 competition mm-hmm. and against the Cadillacs. Yeah, even and, though the Cadillac was more adjustable... <laughs> Whatever you the, the number of menus you had to go in and no, move this things is, around. That's the great thing is like it's all analog little knobs, uh, right? Yeah, you they, don't they, have to they go made into it super smart. The DRS button is by your thumb, so you just you know and you hit it, and you know it's rad to see DRS activated. <laughs> um, no, they they Porsche had, like nailed this thing. Let me let me ask you: You guys think they would have put a DRS button into a production vehicle had uh, Drive to Survive not been so popular? Yes, this vehicle only because I think uh, uh, people that are interested in GT3 cars are watching F1. Yeah. You know, if they yeah. put a, if they put DRS on like the Cayenne, then then yes to your question. <laughs> I gotta say, I, it's wild now that I can I hear people who I'm just like you. Did you just say DRS? Like you? You know what yeah, that is now, it, right? Everybody yeah. knows. Oh yeah. Like yeah. everyone's like an F1 expert now. Oh, everyone's like, a tire expert. Everyone, no, yeah, everyone, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Well, all they know is medium, hard, and soft. Yeah, but right? still, they're, they're experts. <laughs> wet. i got to put on the wet tires. Everybody's got an F1 podcast. Uh, uh, hey. <laughs> okay. So, are so you going to buy one? Uh, I, this is the thing, is I had a big conundrum because, like, the touring I've had, I loved it. But it's like, you don't really get to, like, wind it out on the real road. Like, very rarely do I get a chance to do that. So really, then it's the track. And then if I take it to the track, it's not really the best equipped car for the track because it didn't have the arrows and have all the adjustability, right. blah, blah, blah. So I had a big, like after driving out of the day, I had a big existential question. Like, do I sell my Touring? I love this car. And get a get a RS? I, mean, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. So if I was given, a, okay, let's play it this way. If I was given an opportunity with no markup, <laughs> I'd probably get one. I can but hook I you won't, up. But I won't pay markup. I refuse I, to do I, that game anymore. I will hook you up. I know a dealership. Okay. That will 100% because because it, But it is, wait, I mean, it is crazy, 280 grand. But for what you get for 280 grand comparatively to any other hypercar or supercar out there, it's got a lot there. Are By the a, way, you you're, you're touring, of... real quick, your touring has increased in value. Yes. So, so you so can sell yes, it for 230. Yes, exactly. So I'm, yeah. not, I'm not stressed. <laughs> are, I'm not, you, yeah. uh, are, you, are you a brand ambassador in Asia for any German cars? Nope. Or? Nope. No. Nope. I think nope. uh, Pruniger probably should listen to this episode. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll send it to him. I actually yeah, yeah. was, re- Porsche China reached out to me at one point to enter their GT4, GT3 program, but the timing didn't work out. And then that kind of went away. And I'm hoping they come back to me at some point mm. Uh, mm-hmm. because I would love to. Well, you know, the new, uh, 992.2 is coming in about nine months, mm. something like that. Mm. Um, and I think there will be a new club sport, I think. Mm. So, mm. but also, um, I will, yeah, I'll put you, I just, I did a thing. They, they brought me and Reggie Watts, uh, to Spain. Yes, I remember I, to, I saw Yeah, it. I got to drive. I, I listened the, to your podcast about that. Yeah, I drove the, um, the, 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 what's it called? The 911 Nine Cup, Cup and the uh, GT3R. R. Dude, the GT3R, it's, I mean, G- GT3 cars are just cool, yes. but like, man, that's a good car. <laughs> yes. It's just like, mm. that That's where, the, everyone asks me, like, where do you want to get to in racing? Like, F1, I'm like, no, I'm 50. Like, <laughs> not, that's right. not a possibility. But GT3 is my favorite class, and if I could race in that, I'd love to do that. And it was it was a shockingly easy car to drive. Mm-hmm. Like, it was just, it's just such a, because it, yeah, it, you know, at the end of the day, it's a GT3 underneath it, where it's not like, you know, with Bentley, they got to take a Bentley and, like, yes, squash yes. this thing yes, down. Yes, yes, and, yes. And gut it, and they, you know, they... Like you know, the, w- with the with the GT three R, like it, you know, it's got the motor, and then they just take the accessories off the motor and just put them in front, so it mm. just just moves weight into the middle. But mm. it's still that motor, and it's still the same yeah. engine mount. I was about to say that four point liter or four point liter motor is probably arguably the one of the best motors. <clears throat> and the GT three R is the four point two liter. Oh, that's right. That's right. <laughs> it so is, yeah, let's and, go. One hundred percent. We'll go back to where we started um, yeah. because you just said it. Do you you go to race in Daytona next year? And do TCR, you want to step no, up? No, so, into, so next it? race I'm doing is in June, and that's in mid-Ohio. This is part of the whole series. Oh, okay. You do five races? We do five out of yeah. the ten. Okay. And this so this was this was getting my feet wet in IMSA. I didn't want to do a commit to a whole season. Um, and so I wanted to try it out to see if I was worthy to be able to, to do it. And so that first race, 
showed we were okay with it. We were happy with that. And so I just like to be able to progress in that. But eventually, I'd like to be able to get to maybe a GT4 level, then GT3 level uh, eventually. I mean, that's what the classes are built up for. TCR right. is kind of your entry level right. names, uh, then GT4, then GT3. Right. You know, um, I mean, I have a prototype car, an yeah. LMP3, and we were trying to find something to put that in, but there's less and less races to enter that? those in. Yeah, I bought, I bought it. So, a, Del- a Delara? No, no, it's a, uh, a DES. Okay. Mm. Um, and so... We're maybe going to do some heritage races next year in it. Oh. Uh, we'll see. But uh, we'll see where it gets us at. But, yeah, so that's another jump up as well. Yeah, but GT4, is a, I mean, that's a good class. That's, mm. that's mm. fun. Have, that's you, fun. Yeah. have you been to Le Mans Classic? I've not. Okay, no. that's yes. one to go to. Yes. That is 100%. Yes. Just to, uh, not, it'll, it'll fund, it'll fuel uh, an insane spending of, of cash. <laughs> that's <laughs> one. It's, it is, it's so rad. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, I I took a lap around uh, around the, the the course. Circuit de la Sarthe. Yeah, right. in a, in a G, in a Ford in a GT five hundred with your oh, Ferrari. Okay. okay. Yeah, that was pretty fun. I did Whoa. it in an Audi, a diesel Audi A eight, which was like you know we're going we're, you're going I don't know probably maybe one hundred and forty miles an hour flat on the most long mm-hmm. straight, and it's like. It's just one of those things, like, you were talking about how Daytona is deceptively simple. Like, Le Mans is just insane. That is the most yeah. insane, yeah. like, you know, you watch on TV and the most on straight, it's like, oh, they're doing it. It's like, no, you're on a city street, yes. 200 miles an hour, and there's houses yes, every, yes, and yes, trees yeah. everywhere. Little, little French cottages. And then, just, well, then at night in the rain. Oh, that's, just, it, just that's, the nuttiest and, thing. I, I had so much respect after I did that. So much more respect cars behind after you. I yeah. did that lap. I was yeah. like... I, what am I even doing here? Like, you know, it's, yeah, it's crazy. No, it's great. I, I would love to be able to race in Le Mans. That would be oh, like yeah. the ultimate. Yeah. Oh, I think yeah. that's my kind of F1 for for me, yeah. really. It's, I got it. It's the cool. I, I went this year. It's just the coolest. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to go there uh, just because it's, it's, I think it's interesting mm. um, because we've talked about EVs and software defined mm-hmm. vehicles. Can we talk about the um, software defined toilets? That you're, uh, <laughs> that you're that you're uh, you're uh, you're an ambassador for. Sure. What? You the Col- the Kohler. No. He's uh, he's doing Kohler. So, so get me one. <laughs> the world. So look, I think is it? I am I, am yes, I, I'd like one. Am I correct in this is Kohler's attempt to <clears throat> unseat the leading uh, bidet? Toto. Yeah, Toto. Toto. The the, right. the, yeah. the world, the global leader, I think, in advanced toilet design <laughs> is Toto, which is the, the Japanese toilet manufacturer. Yeah, they've been doing it for years, the years. Decades. Right. You go to any any nice, any place in Japan. Any place in Japan. Has yeah, a yeah. Toto toilet that she, that's a, it's an automatic bidet. It's got the yeah. air cleaner. Uh, it's got a camera warmer. that knows what to look for. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's, have you seen Ron? Ronnie Chang stand up yes, talking about yes, it. Yes. Like, the technology is just <laughs> always gets it in the right spot. Oh right. uh, uh, yeah, but you are. I think a, I think our, our former colleague Schaefer is dating one actually. Probably. <laughs> uh, so you you I saw on your Instagram that you're you got these great pictures of you. It's all white, all yeah. white bathroom, beautiful. Right. The, the, right. What's that all about? So I mean, that's uh, I've I've done brand ambassador yeah. stuff for years yep. now, right? And so Kohler reached out. Uh, it just so happens that I was remodeling my house. So, you know, I was shopping for Kohler goods anyway. Um, and so it just ended up being a really good synergy. And the, the whole perspective for them is kind of from the design perspective. Mm-hmm. They want it to be good quality design. It's not just a, in the back of your corner. They want this thing to look good. Yeah. And so there's three different models, right? One of them, they're all for kind of different people. One's looking more traditional. And the, the far one is more like a disco box. It has LED lights and music and all kinds of stuff <laughs> coming out of it, right? Music, um, wow. To make... I mean, and it makes sense. It's like, why not make your your I mean toilet experience better? Right. I, I read. I forget the stat, but like, since uh, you know, like the Instagram, like the amount of time people now spend on the toilet is like quadrupled. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. It's know? something so. like I, I forgot. I was doing the research when I was doing the ad. It was like something we spend about like eighty three hours a year in the toilet. Right, so why don't you make that <laughs> right a, an enjoyable space to be instead right. of some nasty, gross place, right? And then why don't you make a nice toilet that you enjoy sitting on? If you're going to be sitting on there, you know, scrolling through your Instagram for half an hour, right? <laughs> what? What? <laughs> make it warm. I what's mean, the... my my son this morning was like, "How long were you in the bathroom?" For? I was like, uh, "I don't want to talk about it." What's the uh, What's the price of the top end Kohler? I think it's like the real top end one's like six grand, and then there's like three to four. Is there a Daniel average. Wu edition? <laughs> no, I, I, I'd like to get to that point where I get to design that. That'd yes. be awesome. Wow. That's actually what I was going back to China for is working with brands to become going back to my design roots. Mm. 
mm-hmm. and trying to do uh, brand innovation laboratory stuff. And so we're d- taking stuff that already exists and then maybe improving upon certain designs and things like that. Because um, that's kind of the future in China. It's not a like singular ambassadorship anymore, but it's how can you how can you uh, interact with the brand and do something you know impactful and not just be a face of something, right? right. And so even with the cola thing, the why I was interested in is because you know I'm, I have a design background. It was architecture was what I studied mm-hmm. in school, and so I'm trying to get back to that um, in terms of um, finding new opportunities for entrepreneurship there, especially with e-commerce. E-commerce is huge, and you're busy. In China. You're just yeah. busy. <laughs> yeah. it's, um, hey, it's how did we get well, you. He's, See, got fun, he's got a fun. Here, here's the thing: is I'm very cynical about where the movie industry is going. Yeah, mm. I'm hearing this a lot from and people. in both worlds, like yeah. in China and in the U.S., it's kind of taking the same path, which is like, you know, everyone got crazy on the streaming thing, right? And then the streamers realized they spent way too much money, so they're pulling back now. Yep. yep. But are people even going to theaters to watch movies anymore? What is the future of that going to be? Um, I'm not so interested in making like short form content. You know, I'm kind of old school like that. So I'd almost rather not be doing that space and let the young kids do that. Isn't your art director, producer, like getting, I don't know, studio owner or something? No? Is it you want to do, like, no. in, a big, in, a, in a bigger way? Or no, I, I decided I don't want to do that either. I'm not really into, I mean, I don't mind producing small, you know, like a small company producing a couple of movies, one movie or two every right. year to put something out there of, of, of meaning. Um, but I don't want to run a whole studio. It's not. I'd I mean, rather. our uh, mutual friend, uh, uh, you know, Jonah, yeah. uh, was I, t- I had some conversation the other day, and he's like, "Yeah, the golden age of TV is over. It's, done. it's yeah, just it's done. over. It's like, done. No one's putting money in anymore." And then on top of that, it's just like, how do you even get eyeballs on your thing anymore? Right? right. There's so much content out there that's like, I don't even have time to catch up with stuff. Right? I know. Like, you know everyone's so, telling me you got to so watch hard. Shogun. You got to watch Shogun, and yeah. I'm like, I, yeah, not now. Yeah, I mean, yeah. there's shows from five years ago that I'm still trying to catch <laughs> right, up on. Right. right. So. So to me, like I'm looking for more interesting ways to express my creativity that other than film and acting, you know. But uh, but before we end this, do you have any plugs? You got any uh, shows, movies, anything coming out? Uh, let's see. No, I have uh, the the movie I did in China called Decoded is coming out in July. Okay, um, uh, sci-fi tech thriller. No, it's like imi- imitation game meets um, B- Beautiful Mind. Okay. So it's about decoding cryptology. Okay. Um, and it's, uh, the main character is this young kid who's a mathematical genius, but it, it, in his youth, he gets cast away as being like you know, mentally insufficient. And it actually turns out he's autistic, but it turns out he's a brilliant hmm. mathematician. So my character is this uh, family member who takes him back in and because he's about to be sent away for adoption, takes him back in and kind of mentors him through his teens and college years. Um, and then uh, John Cusack's actually in the movie. Oh, he cool. plays okay. his no uh, kidding. his college mentor, who then mentors him, and then they end up having a kind of battle of wits because John Cusack character gets pulled back to the United States to become a coder, and then eventually this kid gets pulled into the Chinese CIA. This is called Seven Hundred One to become a decoder, and then he realizes he's decoding his ma- his oh, old mentor's code. Oh, that's codes. fantastic. So it's a really cool, really cool storyline. Oh, I love John Cusick. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah, no, it was yeah. awesome working with him. Wow. <laughs> there was a couple a times behind him, I was walking behind him and said, I said, two dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, but better off dead. Uh, uh, I mean, he oh, did. Uh, um, uh, Gross Point Blank. Gross, Gross Point Blank. blank. One Crazy so Summer. Many. There oh, was that one. Oh, oh, I mean, the... Um, uh, no one's ever seen this, but it's one of the best movies. It's called The Sure Thing. Oh, yes, that was great. Amazing. Oh, like that movie is one of the, he's so good in that. Like it's such it, a free performance. It was amazing because he literally is, was the only person that didn't speak any Chinese on set. And right. he's trying to navigate um, the the situation. And, you know, there's a translator there that's not translating the best, right? Right. And blah, blah, blah. And he's like, you could see him just processing, but he's so old school and so much experience that he understands the language of film. So he just looks at what the director is trying to achieve on the on the playback and like within a a take or rehearsal, he's got it and hmm. he's on. It was pretty impressive to see that, like to be this fish out of water in this what, situation. Just completely what a adapt. legend though, man. Like he did I can't remember the name of the movie. He did this movie. It was about um uh, uh, Hitler's uh, gallery, like like he was gonna put Hitler as a painter into a gallery. It's like it's called Max, uh, Max, uh, and it is one of my favorite movies. It's such a cool, weird movie yeah. where, like, you know, it's like, come on, Hitler, let's let's get a let's get a beer, you know, like, <laughs> because you know, before he became a politician, he was trying he to make to it an artist, in the right? art world, yes. and this was this Jewish guy 
who owned a gallery who just thought his work was so bizarre. It's it's a crazy movie, and he Cusack was so good in it. It's such a great film. He, he's a, I love his career path because it's like he took. He could have gone very mainstream, but he always took, like, right. went off the beaten path. Yeah. Always. I mean, he was in Con Air, right? Right, I Con mean, Air, yeah, The he, Rock. You yeah, know, yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. Yeah, no. He's, he was in The Rock? I don't think he was in The no, Rock. No, Rock. Sorry, Con Air. I got confused. Yeah, yeah, Con Air. Yeah. Yes, Con Air. But he was just, he was just, he's great. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah. what a, that's cool. Yeah. That's very cool. Okay. That's, so, um, you're going to the GT show. Yes. You're gonna look at some Chinese knockoff Chinese parts. Uh, you're gonna you're gonna come back. Oh, but you, that makes them not knock off anymore, right? Exactly, right. <laughs> authentic. Yeah, we couldn't. We couldn't. I got it. So a that's joke. also really interesting because there is a there. They see what's happening with like JDM culture and all that stuff outside of China, the 9/11 culture, blah blah blah, all that stuff. But they can't have access to any of that stuff because yeah. none of that stuff is allowed in China. Nothing that wasn't already imported to China is allowed into China. Right, so right. and they don't have the 25 year vintage rule like they do in Hong Kong or even here. Right. So <laughs> no loopholes. So, so there's no way. But there's like these unicorns. So like there's a 993 turbo that was somehow imported into China back in the day. So that thing is worth almost like a million dollars because right. it's the only one that's legal in China. They can't right? bring them all through Hong Kong? They no. Can't. No. They can't. Because Hong Kong's got a crazy car scene. C yes. And then there's a crazy vintage car scene yeah. as well, right? Uh but they're all so Hong Kong, you cannot import a left-hand drive car, right? Anymore. You, you well, no, they're all right-hand drive because they're they're still British, yeah, 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 right? Yeah, 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 yeah. But right. China is left-hand drive. Right. So you can't, and then you can't drive a right-hand drive a left. I'm confusing myself. A left a right-hand drive car in China, right? There's yeah. no special discipline, Nothing. I don't think so. Okay. And so they, for, therefore, you can't import a car to Hong Kong, then import it back into China. Oh. So. So like all the JDM stuff, like the old Supras, blah blah blah, all that stuff. Like can't see you, everyone yeah. messing with those here, but like you can't. Yeah. Oh, so theirs wild. is yeah, like yeah, maybe yeah. two thousands onwards. So some of the Lexuses, some of the Nissans, and all that stuff, they're messing with, but not they don't have access to that. So that's the biggest kind of FOMO they have is they see the rest of the world doing that stuff that they can't really get into. But I think the next cycle is going to be their own stuff. Like it's not going to be JDM cars anymore. It's going to be you know, accessories for their domestically made stuff. Okay. Right. Well, we'll see. That's wild. Um, That's wild. I was just, I was going to, you, w I, we, we, we'd love to chat with you after you go to China's SEMA show and then whatever comes out of uh, uh, Jidu. Jidu. Yeah. yeah. And maybe we can make some connections with them. See some cars. Yeah, hook us up. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, Frank Wu, the designer, he's you know American educated. He's really right. in the videos. You yeah, saw. we he's, watched the video. Yeah, great guy. Yeah. Um, yeah. and he would love to share. He's very proud of this project. Um, Done. All right. Um, I mean, I can't imagine what it's like to work for a car company that basically is giving you a blank check to do whatever you want that falls within that parameter, right? And he's be able to do it, and it's the speed at which they're doing it, it's like pretty insane like yeah, there's yeah. no company in the world right now and i've also been around i've like i went to the lucid factory i went to faraday right and i saw what you know, the levels that it could be right and they seem to have all the right pieces in place and understand what they're doing and so and also the with their layout and the rollout of what they're going to be doing with this suv first smart to to introduce an suv right. then the next thing is this sports sedan then the next thing is this giant, you know, luxury SUV to be driven around in, and then the hyper car, the halo car. Like they understand that a car brand needs to be diverse like that. Real quick, just I know we're running out of time, but uh, is there a market for hyper cars in China? Yeah, I think so. For the for the super billionaire rich dudes, then there are a lot of them there, right? Yeah. Um, you know, there's tons of Lambos and all those those douchey cars around China. Wow. So I imagine that there's going to be a need for domestically. You know, so created you can, ones. Sure. As well. So you can accelerate right up to the speed limit and smile for all the cameras. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So, exactly. Well, there's probably roads uh, somewhere. I don't know. Yeah. Well, there's a ton of tracks all over the country, there so you go. they yeah, can yeah. go to there. Yeah. Cool. Well, Daniel Wu, um, pleasure to see you again. Thanks for having me. This is great. Uh, thanks yeah. for coming back. Too too quick. We'll have to do it again. Yes, I'm glad we talked about EVs this time. Last time we didn't really even talk about EVs. No. Nah. <laughs> we were, we were just get you know you were early guests, but yeah. Thank yes, you. So.
the inevitable vodcast brought to you by the all-electric Nissan Aria, inspired by the future, designed for the now.